You want more, I'll give you more. Speaking of that J. Lulu jail time, uh, we've got another Diddy blind item. So this is in 2013 and this was released on PR uh, Newswire. I used to also have to do investor relations and I used to release, uh, like write the press releases to give and send them to PR Newswire, that's funny. Sean Diddy Combs and Serap, ultra premium Baca team up with- So much bigger than you could ever imagine. It's the whole system. <laughs> What's up guys, boy Penny? What is it that the authoritarian fears the most? It don't care if you're a king or a dictator or a Marxist leader or a communist leader, it, it, it is always the same thing. You fear the truth because the truth about your crimes against humanity, the truth about who you are, the truth about your own personal moral failings, your own weakness, your own brutality, these truths get known and then people rise up against you. This is why, of course, free information is blocked in all totalitarian systems. It's why whistleblowers or people that speak the truth go missing inside of systems like Soviet Russia or modern day communist China. Vladimir Lenin, the founding father of Soviet Russia had this to say, it is true that liberty is precious, so precious that it must be carefully rationed, meaning nobody must be at liberty to question us or to know the truth. It is sort of with that table setting that we wish to talk about uh, this very interesting little story that crossed our feed here seconds ago. Kylie Marissa Roth, controversial TikToker, dead at 36. So who is Kylie Marissa Roth? Well, I don't actually know, to be quite honest with you. Um, I'm not on TikTok. I, I don't really know uh, TikTok celebrities. Um, it's not a platform that I particularly invest in for a lot of different reasons, but this was a TikToker that had a big following uh, that had 221,000 followers, 5 million likes, and apparently had millions more followers, but TikTok banned their account. Why? Kylie Marissa Roth, a TikToker known for controversial celebrity blind items, who started many of her videos with the famous catchphrase, you want more, I'll give you more, has died at 36. It's a little strange for somebody who seems to be in decent health, right? 36 years old. I mean, you're certainly not supposed to die at that age. Uh, Kylie's sister, Lindsay, announced on Monday on Instagram claiming the content creator died last week. We don't know what happened yet. A little strange for the sister to be saying. I know she touched many people with her humor, intelligence, and beauty, gossip, activism, uh, athleticism, and more. She had many gifts. If anybody is connected to Kylie, I'm here to talk and share memories. So, like, her family's completely in the dark as to how her sister died. Her mom also in the dark as to how she died. Jackie Cohen Roth also reacted to the news on LinkedIn, writing, my daughter has passed away, but saying that they really don't have any idea how she died. Kylie loved and lived fiercely. Nothing makes sense now. And we under will understand more in the next few days. People are asking questions about this, obviously. I mean, it's a tragedy, but people are asking questions about this because, again, the nature of her work was to expose celebrities and celebrity culture. Uh, Kylie's last TikTok, in which she talks about the uh, irony of a cringe Tom Sandoval and JoJo Suiya both appearing at the Fox Special Forces, was posted last week, currently has over 2 million views. Again, I'm not a big time celebrity culture guy. You won't find, I, I despise Hollywood and celebrity culture, but there are some people who super get into it, right? And, and this TikToker was one of them. Here's the post from her sister here, got 9,000 likes, talking about how her sister passed away and they, they don't know what happened. They're not sure what the hell happened. Now, if you go through her account, well, you can see uh, the deceased account, as you can see her with millions of views, actually talking about, uh, well, some pretty big name people, right? Uh, Noah Cyrus, The Rock, uh, Timothy Sh uh, Chalmay, Kylie Jenner. I don't even know how to say his name right. That shows you exactly how tied into celebrity culture I am. Selena Gomez, Jay-Z, and so on and so on. Sasha Baron Cohen. And so what a lot of this, you know, what a lot of what she talks about is effectively, you know, sort of exposing what is going on right now, like here with with Diddy is a good example, right? Talking about Diddy and what's actually happening behind the scenes. Uh, an example of her work and talking about Diddy, like right here. You want more, I'll give you more. Speaking of that J. Lulu jail time, uh, we've got another Diddy blind item. So this is in 2013 and this was released on PR uh, Newswire. I used to also have to do investor relations and I used to release, uh, like write the press releases to give and send them to PR Newswire, that's funny. Sean Diddy Combs and Serac, ultra premium Baca team up with Uber for the holidays to provide 1 million worth of safe rides home. Serac will host additional pledge parties. 
throughout the month of December in key markets, including New York, Los Angeles, Miami, Atlanta, Washington, D.C., and Chicago. This sounds like a great idea. So Diddy hosts parties all over the country, but specifically those markets where, I don't know, Diddy's parties, he likes to ply women full of stuff, and then, oops, they need ride homes, rides home. Hmm, this sounds like the makings of nothing good. Now, in hindsight, people are looking at the producer wannabe rapper and his charity that he ran about a decade ago. Basically, it involved giving drunk women, especially celebrities, a ride home. The more drunk, the better. Our producer slash wannabe rapper would sometimes personally take them home. Diddy's not an Uber driver, but he would personally take these people from his pledge parties home. What's, how much you guys want to bet that uh, they didn't make it home? Allegedly, there's still four or five of them still trapped in Diddy's basement in his Miami home. And so, yeah, I mean, obviously she she covers a, a lot of ground here and is uh, somebody who is uh, exposing or at the very least like is uh, very tied in to celebrity culture. And we, we know that because it's really interesting. Movie stars like the uh, like Julia Fox, star of Uncut Gems, uh, saying, I, I know I never met Kylie in real life, but I felt like I knew her. So devastated. Have been crying ever since the news leaked on TikTok. I will miss her deeply. Uh, Bunny XO, country music star Jelly Roll's wife, commented on Kylie's last TikTok. I am so sad. Uh, there are other TikTokers that are following up. So like celebrities and celebrity culture, like I, I like to obviously know her and talk to her and watch her. Did she cross too many powerful people, right, is the question that many are asking right now. So Kylie Marissa Raw, famous TikToker, has been found dead with no cause of death given. She recently uploaded videos exposing, exposing Oprah and Diddy. The family is unsure about what caused her death. Uh, last week leading up to her passing, she was having issues with her account with over 700,000 followers being banned. So again, a lot of people are saying like, what's going on here? Very, very, very odd. Uh, and a lot of those people are asking, did this have something to do with the uh, exposing of Diddy? She has a lot, based on our uh, review of her channel, she has a lot of focus on the Diddy story and for good reason. I mean, obviously, right? Like for good reason. There are cameras, hidden cameras found all over Diddy's house. Like when the feds raided the house, you know, the house looked like this on the inside and they ripped up everything looking for electronics. You can see the footage of the feds carrying out electronics, computers, hard drives from the house. Surely Diddy recorded somebody who he shouldn't have in his freakout parties, right? And got either a politician or somebody famous, somebody who could like call in a federal raid like this. And that's what happened to this guy. Look at this. Look at the servers, the safes cracked open and the electronics strewn about. That's what the feds were after here. So what are, you know, what are people who knew Diddy saying about all of this? Uh, well, various rappers are saying, yeah, we knew what you were doing. You had a hard drive with all of these tapes on them and you were trying to hide them, right? Check it out. But he needed to build a spot over there in Bali for his boy Puffy. Cause Puffy need... I warn Keefe D to take his ass over there. There's no extradition laws over there. So I'm warning you now, Puffy. Take your ass over there. Reggie Prediction. I know Puffy is smart enough, and he probably done already cleaned his houses. But sex, sexual predators, what do they do? What do, and we'd be like, damn, why? They treat their sex tapes like yeah, remember that song, Me and My Girlfriend, that Pac did? You know, what he was talking about? What was Pac talking about, y'all? And that? Do y'all really know what he was talking about? For those of y'all know what he's talking about, he was talking about a gun, but sexual predators is what hold on to their tapes. And cops know that. So I wouldn't be surprised if some store just or some of Puffy properties be getting raided real soon. Well, isn't that interesting? Because lo and behold, just a few short weeks ago, we saw the government agents raiding Puffy's properties and seizing tapes, hard drives, computers, laptops, and various data centers from them. 
along with, of course, arresting his direct family members, or at the very least placing them under arrest by putting them in handcuffs and bringing them out of the house like this. So does this have anything to do with the death of this TikToker who has been exposing sort of this cover up here, right? You can see, you can see like in, in, in video after video after video, uh, this expose about Diddy and what's actually happening. And some of these videos getting millions and millions of views. Did you get a little too close to the truth here? We're not exactly certain, but we do know what Jesse Waters was able to uncover about Diddy and about his freak out parties and what they were really about. This is why they're calling him the Jeffrey Epstein of the music industry. Have a listen. Now, Diddy called these his freak out parties. In attendance were celebrities, politicians, athletes, international dignitaries like British royalty, Prince Harry, and music label executives. Lil Ron claimed some of the biggest names in the recording industry sponsored these parties with sex workers, drugs, and underage girls. The CEO of Universal Music, Lucian Grange, is named as a defendant. So is the former CEO of Motown Records, Ethiopia, Habert Mariam, and others. Lil Rod says hidden cameras were in every room of Diddy's homes. Lil Rod believes that Mr. Combs possesses compromising footage of every person that has attended his freak-off parties and his house parties. Salacious tapes of Hollywood's biggest names, including record CEOs and politicians, doing drugs and cavorting with prostitutes and minors. The complaint argues that these freak-off parties were a business model. Young and up-and-coming talent attended and were promised career opportunities and access to music executives. They were then plied with drugs and alcohol, filmed. Some were blackmailed. There was a quid pro quo, according to the complaint. Lil Rod said not only were these music executives sponsoring these parties, they were handing Diddy large sums of cash that he used to pay for the sex workers and drugs. Something tells me the IRS is going to be interested.